Hello. Well, we've been talking intensely the last 45 minutes, and we weren't going to record because we just wanted to hang out and really touch base since we've all done blunt over intent, and we were just checking in with each other. But then it got intense, and a lot of questions arose. We're really just trying to keep it simple because Quasi has explained this in many, many videos, and we've sent links and all different kinds of different um, posts explaining the same thing over and over. So once again, Quasi is going to go back to the beginning and just kind of explain it simply before he elaborates on more with videos he's been doing with, I think, Flat Earth After Party. So Hi. Daniel and Quasi are with me today. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jada. Hi, Quasi. What's up? All right. So what happened was it was two and a half years ago. I got the idea after sun gazing for a couple of weeks to write on a piece of paper some specific words which were, I intend to worship all and exclude none, which I actually took my pen onto a piece of paper and I wrote out the words, I intend to worship all and exclude none on paper, on video. And I wrote, I intend to usher in heaven and earth. And I pricked my finger and I put my blood onto the paper and then I published the video to my channel. At the time, I was a round earther, okay? I thought we were an accident floating through space. And uh, shortly after, about 90 days after, I realized that the Earth is actually flat. And it started with them telling us that the universe is actually flat because it's a hologram. And I have an example here. Let me just see where I put that piece of paper. I just had it here a second ago. Oh, here it is. Okay, so they say we're living in a hologram, and holograms are flat. You see how you look like you could dive into that, that hologram? But really, it's flat as a sheet of paper. So they tell you that the universe is flat. So that's where... I started on the flat earth, and then I started to realize other stuff. Like, for example, you put a motorboard on your head when you graduate school, showing you the flat earth plane that you're living on. And what I'm telling you is that if the earth was spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and you weighed 150 pounds over here at the equator, as you moved up to the pole, you'd weigh 750,000 pounds because of the light. no more spin, less spin as you go up the, up the globe. There would be less of a spin, less of a centrifugal force, and, and nothing. The point I'm trying to make is that nothing works on a globe. And shortly after I started decoding all the symbols, like for example, you think this is some sort of satanic symbol, but it's telling you as above, so below. It's showing you the candy cane where Jesus the Son places his light into the hole. And what I'm telling you is that I started to decode everything, and I realized that. We're on a flat earth plane and that it's one side of a light hole is a black hole. So when you see the sun above your head, that's one side of a coin. It's, it's one coin with two sides, for example. They say um, that we would be trapped on this division symbol right over here. So when you see that, when you hear the words Jesus, that would be the sun above your head and Satan is the sun beneath your, your feet. You would be on this flat earth checkerboard right over here, and there's a hole at the center of the dish. When you see cops eating donuts, you know, in, in the UK, the, the cops put the checkerboards on their head, just like when you graduate from school, you put the motorboard on your head. They're showing you that it's a flat earth plane and that there's a hole at the center of the dish, and every single compass is pointing to it. And what's happening is, Jesus, the sun, you see the candy canes, the candy canes are showing you that the sun... If you ever see a black hole, if you type into your computer Google black hole and hit enter and you hit the images button, you'll see pictures of black holes. They'll show you like a black hole with no light being able to shine through. And then other ones, they show you a disc with the sun being eaten and a candy cane. And then out from that disc comes this jet, an ash trailing jet. So this astral light, all this stuff, why... Do you walk into a church and do you see stained glass windows and stuff? It's Why do you blow out candles, close your eyes and make a wish? It's because the sun above your head is what's making your flesh and your bones and your blood. And now that you're here, if you want to bring something into reality, that's coming through the black sun. The black sun is, well, they say that the deepest that they can dig is 8 miles down or 12 miles down. They can't go any deeper because... That's the other side. It's a, you would start on the other side where they show you in like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They went into the vortex and then they popped in upside down. And that other place 
underneath us is the land of perpetual twilight. So if you look up the electric universe model, and they tell you Saturn was the primary sun that was stationary in the sky right over there with the land of perpetual twilight, nothing's changed. What's changed is that before you were under that flat line, and now you're on top of it. And we need to get to the center of the dish over here where the sun places its light into the hole. This would be the holy grail at the center of the dish where the aurora borealis begins. At the 65th parallel, there's a time of the year where the sun spirals into the center of the dish and then spirals back out, bringing the seasons. And there's, if you look online, you, on YouTube, you can see at the 65th parallel, there's cameras that follow the sun around for three whole days straight, round and round and round and round while it spirals in. Now, every compass is pointing to the center of the dish. It's showing you on this one, the tree of life, and it says S-E-E. -E. See the tree of life that's shooting out, and you see this one is a candy cane. Now, it's pointing to where Jesus the sun places his light into the hole, and out from that hole comes his green astral jet. So, what I want to get across here is that the sun beneath us is stationary and fixed so that the light can shoot out of the holy hole, which is the holy of holies at the center of the dish. So, bear with me for a second. I had mentioned in a previous video, you can find it on Flat Earth After Party by typing in Flat Earth After Party and hitting enter. And then going to their channel, hitting the videos button and scrolling down, you'll see Quasi Luminous Presents. And I'm explaining in this video that you see Shiva, and Shiva's inside of either a, a pear that's upside down, pointing to the way out at the center of the dish, or he's in a flaming asshole. Now, the reason it's an asshole is because one side of a light hole is a black hole, makes this Vesca Pisces. But at the center of the dish, it's not a Vesca Pisces. It's a round hole called the Holy of Holies. If you read up on this hole, you'll see that it's breathing. The rivers, the four rivers bringing the tides, that it's pushing in and sucking in and out the waters, bringing the tides. It's not actually the moon, okay? They say it's the magnetic mountain or something like this, which is the pulsating astral jet. So hmm. bear with me for a second. When I see this symbol, you're thinking Satan and Jesus, whatever, this, all this crazy shit. And what I'm telling you is that if you look closer, you'll see the exclamation point. They say you're made out of clay. If you want to get to the land, uh, to the living waters and live forever or get out of this matrix, they're showing you, you need to get to the hole at the center of the dish. Life preserver. You want to get everlasting life, right? Everybody wants everlasting life. You want to preserve your life. You need to get to the center of the dish. You put a wreath on your door at Christmas, and you also set up one at a funeral. That's the only two times you see a wreath. And what that's telling you is you need to get to this holy hole before you're dead and drink from the living waters. That water is going to be found in the land of perpetual twilight, which is right beneath our feet. Scientists will tell you they can only dig down 8 or 12 miles, whatever, and the bits break, and they can't go any deeper than 8 miles or 12 miles, whatever it is. The point I'm trying to make is that they can't go any deeper because on the other side of that begins the other the underworld, which is not actually a bad place, that's the land of perpetual twilight. When they say there was the golden error, that's because we were inside the earth or the other side of this. Okay, so here I put this together as an example. You see, we would have been like this and we were taken out from the and brought upside down. We're on the upside down. We're on the wrong side of the fence. We need to get into that hole at the center of the dish and get back to the right side of the fence. That's where we find Hyperborea, and that's the place where people beam out of this world and go into other places, like above the waters, uh, where they say your three-dimensional living body is asleep right now above the waters, and they show you in movies that you're wearing a suit, and you're sleeping like this, and your consciousness has been stripped of your body and is now trapped inside this computer, where they tell you it's one electron balanced by a positron. Time going in one direction, time going the other direction. It's one side of a light hole is a black hole. We would be on the E-creation disk or CD here in the center. And what's happening is that the sun, you see candy canes, 
The sun is placing its light into the Holy of Holies, and out from that hole comes the green astral jet or the tree of life. And the tree of life is telling you, like, life preserver, you need to get the tree of life at the center of the dish. Okay? Now, every compass points to it. It's simple. Uh, another key thing that uh, I think you should understand is that you say, you go into a church, you say, Amen. It doesn't matter what religion, you say, Amen. It's from Amen Ra. The sun above your head is Ra. The sun beneath your feet is Amen. But it's one sun. It's one side of a light hole is a black hole. That's why it's as above, so below. It's the same exact sun. As within, so without. Now, I have pointed out the, in a previous video that your vowels, your vowels are A-D-I-O-U. And sometimes, why we sing that song in America. A-D-A-D-I-O-U. Right? You know that song, right? And sometimes, why? All right, so... You see the E is bent to the left, so if you take your E and bend it to the left, and you add the Y, then it says way, and then you have the I, which is also the exclamation point, telling you exclamation, pointing to the center of the dish, and then O-U, the reason I put the T there, because if you go back the other way, it's T-U-V. T-U-V, meaning like the mm. vagina hole, okay, where we need to get to, and the O, meaning the holy of holies at the center of the dish, so the... The V meaning the divine feminine, which is the black hole underneath our feet that we need to get back to. And this is the same story being rubbed in your face over and over and over again. You go into church, you take communion, that white disc. So the sun is a disc. One side of that disc is a black hole. It's a disc. That's why they give you a disc. You put a disc on your tongue when you go into communion because they're telling you that the sun is a hole. One side of a hole this hole is a black hole. It's on loop. So when you see candy canes, and if you try and if you take a candy cane and you try and figure it into a figure eight, you'll end up with a question mark. And if you start up with a question mark and figure it into a figure eight, you'll end up with a candy cane. So when you see in Egypt, you see all these statues holding candy canes and onks, it's all the same story over and over and over again. They're showing you that. It's one side of a black hole is a black hole. That you were birthed into this world, you will be birthed out of this world also. So, I think one of the most important things I, I think we should clear up is this. That Satan is not this evil character that you've been told. Satan is a black sun and the sun is conscious. It's what's bringing your intent to fruition. And that's why they made you fear and think all these horrible things about it so that you would never be able to access this hidden power that you have. Uh, your ability to manifest stuff. Like an example, I want to manifest heaven on earth, and I want to bring all my people to the fountain of youth, and, you know, I put it on paper, and I spilt my blood on it, and shortly after that, I got the eyes to see the truth.